Hey there everybody, welcome to this episode of Gears TV. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Elite Soft Shell Jacket from Pearl Izumi. It's like magic. So as I speak, a lot of the United States is actually under a pretty cold winter, a pretty cold and snowy winter. In fact, New York City just got over a foot of snow the other day, um, which wasn't plowed on the Upper East Side. Sorry about that, guys. And then here in Colorado, last night, we got about three or four inches of snow. So it's been pretty snowy, pretty cold, as it should be in January. So excellent. So what do most people do in this case when they want to get out and ride their bikes? Now, there is the dreaded cycling trainer. Now, I have a great trainer. I love it. I'll, I'm going to review it pretty soon. Um, but at the end of the day, you're still sitting inside, kind of like being on a treadmill. You're stuck on a hamster wheel. Uh, in my case, I sit in front of a computer or my iPad, which is rocking the Netflix, watching something that's going to hopefully keep my brain from busting out of my head for about an hour or so, depending on how long the ride is. And that's not always the most wonderful thing to do. So if it's a tolerable temperature outside, I do get outside. I try my best to bundle up to the hilt and HTFU, um, if you don't know what that means, Google it. Um, get outside and go ride within reason. Of course, I don't want frostbite, um, so I try to kind of cut it off at a smart place. When I have gotten outside on those rides this winter, and, and that includes rides down as low as about 28 degrees on its coldest day, one of the things that's been pretty constant with me is being in this jacket, the Pearl Izumi Elite Soft Shell Jacket. Now, of course, when it gets really cold, there are layers under it, of course, because it would be ludicrous to try to freeze myself like that. But I'm going to take a look at what this jacket does, how it functions, how it worked for me, and what I put under it to really make it a really, really applicable and, and kick-ass winter piece for when you want to get outside and ride your bike or even run. So here we go. So first up, let's talk about the fabric of the Pearl Izumi Elite Soft Shell Jacket. Rather than going with just kind of a one fabric over the entire jacket, what Pearl has done is they've come in with different zones of different fabric because the body needs to have different types of, of fabric on it in different places. It needs to bend more, it needs to block wind here, it needs to ventilate here. So what they've done is exactly that in addressing those ways. Now the first thing is this black area that you can see here on the front, the back, and the top sides of the sleeves. This is a laminated wind block layer, okay? It's a windbreak layer that's going to keep the cold out. It's really going to protect you from the wind because as most of us know, when you're outside, yes, the cold is tough to deal with, but it's the wind that really kind of digs into you. This blue is actually not a windbreak layer, okay? This is a layer that is mostly spandex and this is going to allow ventilation. What you'll notice is that when you're riding with this jacket on, if your arms are down in front and your drops or what have you, depending on what kind of bike you're on, you're going to be blocked, okay? The leading edge of your body is going to be protected from the wind, whereas the backside, the trailing edge, which you may be able to get some ventilation from, is actually kind of open and only covered with this spandex, which is actually backed by a polar fleece. But this spandex type material is not, again, does not have a windbreak layer on it and thus is going to allow you to ventilate more in crucial areas. Again, it comes up into the armpits, goes three quarter, about halfway actually down the side and fully down the inside of the sleeve there, all the way to the wrist cuff. Probably the coolest thing about the fabric of this jacket, in my opinion, is the fact that it is powered by or made by S Cafe. Not to be confused with Nescafe. What is S Cafe, you might ask? Well, first you can Google it. Just Google S period Cafe fabric. What it is, is it's a fabric that's made using recycled or used coffee grounds. So think about how much coffee is drunk every day around the world, much less just in the United States. Think about how much coffee is used and how much of those grounds are just thrown away. Well, S Cafe has come up with a way to recycle those grounds and use them in fabric, to make fabric. Now, in the case of this, it's got a lot, a ton actually, of advantages in using it in a product like this. Now, I'm gonna have to read this. This is not necessarily a review of the fabric per se, so I'll read this direct from the S Cafe information. First off, it's fast drying, okay? This feature is a key element to S Cafe. As moisture moves from your skin touching our S Cafe fabric, it spreads out across the surface area. Basically, it's a great wicking fabric, okay? It pulls moisture away. It's going to keep you cool because it get or warm rather and cool depending on the medium. But remember, when you're cold out, if it's wet, if you get wet kind of via sweat or rain or what have you, that's going to make that cold air cut that much more. Second, odor control with our coffee ground 
permanently embedded in the fiber, the particles work hard with controlling and absorbing odors. The trapped odors are then released with your next wash and dry cycle of your SKFA piece. So it's moisture wicking and it keeps you smelling decent, which is always a plus. Just ask my wife. Third thing, UV protection with SKFA fabric, coffee particles in the fabric. These particles actually refract and diffuse the sun's rays. This provides for natural UV protection throughout the Escafe fabric line. Now, that's great. It's not really an issue in the wintertime, but Escafe works with a bunch of different partners. They don't make any pieces themselves, but this is certainly one where the moisture wicking and the odor management, odor control, is definitely appreciated. So on the interior of the jacket, it is lined with Pearl's Elite Thermal Fleece. You may be able to see here, it's nice and soft and cozy. It's really, really comfortable against the skin. I have worn this for testing purposes without anything, except for like a sleeveless shirt under it. Um, and it's really soft and comfortable against the skin. Another thing that I really like about it, you know, some pieces that you may wear that have a windbreak layer are gonna be a little stiff. They're not gonna be quite that supple. This is really, really very supple. It moves well with the body. The stretch panels, again, which are the non-windbreak uh, fabric back pieces, they, they move really, really well and allow for lots of extension down into different positions, even as far as aero position on a time trial or triathlon bike. Additionally, the outer layer, even the windbreak layer, does have some stretch to it and really allows the body to bend and move as it needs to. It's a really, really supple piece that feels great no matter the position that you're in. Insert position jokes here. Now let's talk about the features of the jacket. First, winter is one of those times of year where you kind of find yourself, if you're me anyway, riding when it's a little bit darker than you might otherwise like to ride in, say, the summertime. So, I've definitely been caught out when it's kind of the sun setting, it's twilight a little bit. That's a really dangerous time of day to be riding. Of course, you can have bike lights and reflectors. Who has reflectors on their road bike? But you can have all those things and Pearl has gone a step further to give you reflective elements 360 degrees. So here you have them on the back, over here on the sides, these are all reflective elements, all the logoing, embleming, and all that embleming, is that a word? Sure. Down here on the sleeves, you can see reflective elements as well as up on the front. Another thing that I really like is this internal draft flap. Right here you can see it's got the Pearl Azumi uh, kind of logo imprinted on it. What's cool about this is that it's topped with almost like a rubber material. So what's great is when you zip it, the rubber, the backside of the zipper actually lays up against that rubber and forms a nice seal. So you're not getting that wind coming through the zipper. Storage on the jacket is actually really great for cold weather pieces. A lot of cold weather pieces kind of ignore that to some degree, or at least just have kind of a really scaled back version of what you might find in say, a summertime road jersey or something like that. So first off, we've got the breast pocket here. It's really nice, has a comms port, basically where headphones can go through and run them up into your ear there. Then on the back here, this actually really cool pocket, it looks like it's just a single pocket, okay? A single zippered pocket. But what's great is when you look inside, there are actually two pockets within that as well as the general pocket. So it's creating kind of three big fleece line pockets there. Now, these pockets are not waterproof, okay? So while they may be a little bit of kind of keeping out the moisture if you're riding from the outside, what I found for me is that a little bit of moisture did form from my own sweat. So even if I had like my phone or something in the breast pocket here, I always keep my phone in a plastic bag when I ride, but even then I, there was some condensation on the bag itself. Not a huge deal, but it is definitely something that you should be aware of if you're gonna be putting something sensitive like a phone or some other kind of electronic back there. Let's talk about the fit of the jacket now. Some of the reviews of this jacket that I've seen online have mentioned that the people wanted it to maybe be a little bit larger. They said it fit a little bit small. I really tend to disagree, and that, with all due respect, I, I tend to disagree because road pieces like this are meant to be form-fitting. They're meant to be tight. They're not meant to be flapping all over the place. For me, I ordered a large, which is typically what I wear on my top, um, and I did that knowing that I'd be able to fit some compression kind of base layers under it to keep myself nice and warm when I needed to layer up. I didn't find that it was overly confining or anything like that. It fit like a road piece should. It moves with the body, again, because of these stretch panels and because of the stretch of the outer windbreak layer. It really moves well with the body. 
Additionally, the collar here actually comes up nice and high, which is something that sometimes pieces neglect in winter winter uh, garments. And when you get out on the bike, you know, you have the whole of your neck kind of exposed. This comes up really relatively high and fits really well around the neck. It's also backed with this softer material that's going to be comfortable and not cause any additional chafing. Also, the arms are contoured, which as you can see means that they are bent. They are shaped to the arms, which is going to keep you comfortable and not cause any kind of hike up of the material when you're down in a drop or in an arrow position or something like that. The arms are also extra long, as they should be in a long sleeve cycling piece, to keep them all the way down to your wrists. And there's a drop tail. That drop tail is going to keep the lower small of your back covered when you do lean over. One of the coolest things that I think could probably go overlooked is this little flap here that's right under the hem. This is a piece of pretty sturdy elastic that runs the entire circumference of the jacket. And what that's going to do is that even when you do bend over, should you bend over quite a bit and you wind up pulling the jacket up a little bit, this elastic is going to really kind of form a seal around the hem and keep you nice and warm and toasty. As I mentioned earlier, I've worn this jacket in several different scenarios. The first one that I'll throw out there is I wore it, it was about 50 degrees and it got a little cooler as the day went on, but it was about 50 degrees and I wore a very light uh, compression base layer underneath it that was sleeveless. Felt great against the skin. I was cool, but not cold. It certainly did its job, and I like to be cool. If you don't start out and you're cool, then you're probably going to overheat later on in your ride. So that was a really good setup. The next scenario found me in a light wind at about 42 degrees. I wore this jacket, the Pearl Izumi Elite Soft Shell Jacket, and underneath it I wore another piece by Pearl Izumi, the Transfer Long Sleeve Base Layer. It did a great job. You know those workouts where you go outside, you put something on, and you come back in after an hour and a half, and you're like, nailed it. That's what happened with this. Perfectly comfortable. It was actually perfect. It was awesome. The third scenario is probably one of the most extreme for me. I mean, some people may ride in more extreme, definitely ride in more extreme weather. This is one of the more extreme ones that kind of got to me a little bit where I was pushing the threshold of wanting to be outside. The weather that day was a windy 31 degrees, which brought the wind chill down to about 20 to 25 degrees wind chill. Um, so that was a little bit rough to take. What I wore was this jacket with underneath it the Pearl Izumi Select Thermal Jersey, again, which we'll be talking about in just a couple weeks, as well as then that transfer base layer also by Pearl Izumi. Part of the reason that we did this is to take a look at how these pieces made by one brand work together to form thermal layers, to actually have this layering effect, because it's not enough to throw on a just big bulky thing. You don't want to do that. These pieces are all meant to work together and did so really well. When I was in that setup, I was actually at times almost too warm. Fortunately, this has a full zip, as does the Select Jersey that I mentioned a second ago, which allowed plenty of kind of zip it up, zip it down to get yourself more comfortable. I was totally fine the entire time on my upper body. My hands, my face, and my feet, on the other hand, were a little bit chilly, but that's okay. They were on the borderline of uncomfortable, but I, I really like to get out and kind of grind it out in situations like that. So this all performed very, very well. You know, I've worn this jacket on both runs and rides. For runs, it does tend to ride up a little bit. It's a little bit short for some reason, but this is a really solid piece. The construction is absolutely fantastic. While it's not the warmest jacket in uh, Pearl Izumi's lineup, that title belongs to the PRO, the Pro uh, WXB Barrier Jacket, if I'm not mistaken. While that may be the warmest, this is definitely the most versatile in my opinion. If you layer underneath it properly, this is a jacket that can easily be worn, depending on where you live. Of course, it's not applicable to Florida. But depending on where you live, this is a jacket that's going to be able to be worn three out of four seasons quite comfortably. Again, depending on where you layer, how you layer what you wear underneath it. And keep in mind that if you get overheated, there's a full zip to be able to get into it. And add to that the fact that you can unzip the breast pocket and let in a little bit more ventilation. This is a really great piece from Pearl Izumi. If you're looking for a solid, again, all around winter, spring, and fall jacket, for cycling and for running, maybe it, maybe it won't ride up on you. I have a particularly long torso, kind of like a penguin. But if you're looking for a jacket, this is definitely something you should check out. So please click on over to pearlazumi.com and take a look around and see if this is something you might like trying. They again have it in this black and blue, they have it in yellow with black, and then they have it, I believe, with red and black. So there are color options. 
definitely something worth checking out. At $175, it does have a pretty decent price tag, but think about what you're getting. You're getting to stay outside when it's cold, you're getting to go outside earlier in the spring, and you're getting something with the solid construction and quality fabrics that's gonna last you a long time. This is not going to hold on to a bunch of smell as tech fabrics tend to do, again, because of the S Cafe fabric technology. So keep that in mind, not a bad price tag for it. Great piece of, of, of cycling gear for the winter, the spring, and the fall. So check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Gears TV. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below, right down there. Also, while you're here, click a like, that little thumbs up guy, and most importantly, subscribe to our channel. You can do so by clicking the subscribe button. I think it's right up there or down there somewhere. But also, in a second, you're going to see a big blue subscribe button right about here. Please click that so you get all the immediate updates whenever we post a video. And we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Please leave us those questions or comments, as I mentioned a second ago, letting us know if you'd like to see more of something. We'd love to be able to get that done for you. If you're going to be at the Snow Industry Association Snow Show in Denver this coming week, SIA, let us know. We'd love to meet up with you. We're going to be taking a look at some of the new and upcoming fabrics and technologies and pieces and skis and snowboards and jackets and helmets and goggles and sunglasses, everything from all the different snow industry um, companies out there. And that's next week in Denver. So definitely be on the lookout for uh, on our Instagram, which is instagram.com slash thegearist, on our Facebook, as well as on Twitter. Definitely follow us on those and look for our updates from the SIA Snow Show. If you don't mind, click on over to gearist.com, take a look around, take a look at our other reviews, let us know what you think. And if, again, if you have any questions, let us know. You can email us, info at gearist.com. Thanks so much, guys, for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys, so much for watching this episode of Gearist TV. As I said a second ago, please click that wonderful subscribe button. We'd love for you guys to see all of our videos, so do take a look around the Gearist YouTube channel and share with your friends. Why not? Everyone loves a good gear review video. Thanks again so much, guys. We'll talk to you next time.